Yes, guys, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learned, the show where we go through all the major talking points of the last Chelsea game. And that was an absolute roller coaster against Leicester City. We went through every single range of emotion possible anger, happiness, dejection, confusion, everything, absolutely everything. We're going to touch on every element of the Chelsea Leicester game and also the draw for the semi finals because we didn't get the ideal opposition. But having not optimistic, but just not really a negative perspective on it. But I'll touch on it when we get to that point. But before we start, as always, hit the like button, subscribe. I do need to shout out our sponsors as well. Big up to Match Bingo. As always, download the app in the description below. This, as always, is Bingo with a twist. Instead of numbers, you have fouls, goals, offsides, and other moments on the pitch that you're trying to call out as it happens. Games are capped at two quid, so you don't have to worry about being responsible. They also offer free games if you want to just try it out for one time. And 35% of the profits they make go to the Stroke Association. So guys, join us, get involved. Click the link in the description below right now and get involved with the app. Big up to Match Bingo and big up to Chelsea. Big up to Chelsea for, for turning things around from what looked like a, a, another bottle job. It looked like we were going to bottle it when the second goal came in. I thought, wow, the, the blue billion pound bottle jobs line is going to make another run for it. But we made the right subs. Well, the subs are confusing, but we brought the right people on. It was just, it was also a little bit late and it felt reactive. And that's why everybody was so annoyed about it at the time. But we did bring on the right people. I will give credit to Pochettino for that as well. I just, I just need to see them quick, quickly. And to be honest, that was going to be my first point. So I'm already going to touch on that. Great subs, wrong timing. And, and Sterling should have been off at halftime. Just to at least save himself from any further abuse. Because that first half he had was absolutely hideous. And to be honest, it warranted a substitution. And now I know there's a lot of um, sources coming out talking about the way the fans have been reacting to Sterling or reacting to certain individuals. I'm just going to say we're 11th. Like, I'm not surprised fans are running out of patience with certain individuals, especially the experienced ones. We shouldn't be mid-table. Our standard is not mid-table. Our expectations, our demands are not mid-table. So if we're in that sore position, anybody can get it. Literally anybody can get it. So I don't feel any type of way about it. I've seen better players get criticised by this fan base, let alone the players that we have this season. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, on the substitutes, great subs. We brought on the right people. Sort of ideally like to see them come on a little bit earlier. But that's about it. That's about it. Other than that, I think in terms of individuals, I think we had a good game. We had a good game throughout the first half. We were just very, very wasteful. Very wasteful. And that kind of leads me on to the second point. I've been speaking about this as well a little bit in the first point, And that is Raheem Sterling. Absolute disaster class. I said on my fan cam, that's genuinely top 10 worst individual performances I've seen from a Chelsea player. That's up with Havertz against Arsenal last season. Kind of ironic. Um, Ziyech against Salzburg. Mount against Southampton. Alonso v Man City. Bakayoko v Watford. I'm putting it right in the mix with those individual performances. It was that bad. It got to a point where in my watch along, I was raging out so much that when he got the assist for the second, I was still annoyed at Sterling. Because I've been waiting for him to do something right for about 40, 45 minutes. And I know I've said before, like, he does get you GNA and you have to put up with it to a certain point. But for how long can you? How long can you put up with that? Especially from one of the experienced players. When it's like a Mudrick or a Madueke, they do need to develop. They do need to get a better, un a better understanding in certain periods. And when you're a young player, you will have those sorts of, up of ups and downs. You shouldn't be expecting that from a 29-year-old. 29 going 30 soon. I need a little bit more consistency from him. He hasn't shown me that. Whereas he was really good at the start of the season, he hasn't shown any of that level of consistency since. So, on Sterling, like I'll never say someone deserves to get booed. But I understand. I understand. And I'd be so real if I was in the ground, I probably would have booed him as well. So... It is what it is. It is what it is. But on to a more positive performance. Cole Palmer, yet again shining. I think he's on, what, 21 
goals and assists this season or maybe more than that in his first season. Like, really and truly, if Cole Palmer was playing for a top six side right now, he would be part of the player of the season nominations. It's only because he's in 11th place that he's probably not going to get anywhere near that award. And even then, I don't think he would win it over certain individuals who are in a title race. But his season has been unbelievable. I, I really hope he wins the Young Player of the Year award because he absolutely deserves it. This has been his breakout season by an absolute mile. And he's the only guy that we can consistently turn to for a moment of magic genuinely the only person and for his age and for the experience that he's had in the game time that he's had before he joined Chelsea it's been good to see somebody that we can rely on consistently so big up to Cole Palmer yet another great performance from him all we can ask for is that you keep turning up because if it ain't for Cole Palmer we are flirting with relegation and I don't even want to imagine that sort of timeline it's crazy um next point Robert Sanchez he can't start the semi-final. He really can't. Even, like, I get I get that we do this thing where, well, not just us. Most teams do the whole cup keeper for your second choice keeper option and everything like that. But no, no, like, this season is so important to us. I can't be trying to hope Sanchez can do something right because even his claiming of crosses was shaky yesterday. Positioning was shaky. The time it took to release the ball was slow again, and it nearly led to a goal to a goal being conceded in the first half. Like we need more. Petrovic, like I know his distribution isn't great, but he's not going to dawdle on the ball. He's just going to get rid of it. Sanchez doesn't do that. Petrovic will claim crosses better, and you could argue both are good shot stoppers. That's fine, but Petrovic is the one in better form. It needs to be Petrovic now to the end of the season in all the games. Sanchez has not done enough to justify starting the Cups, to justify starting in the league games. It is why it is. He shouldn't be playing. We move. Um, on to the final point. Did touch on it earlier. It's time to beat Manchester City. We've got Manchester City in the Cup semi-final. Obviously, the toughest opposition we could have hoped to get. But, I mean, if, if we're serious about winning the Cup, you got to beat these sorts of teams. Manchester City are there. We've, ha we've got a respectable record against them this season. We haven't lost them, although we haven't won either. It's time to win. That's all I can say about it. It's just time to win. you got to get the victory today. Well, when we play them. But can't go into that game being scared. Can't go into that game being shook. Fact is, you've played them twice and you've stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And you've given them probably their most frustrating games of the season. Time to go and do it again. This time, we need to leave with a victory. It would be nice to get one at Wembley, in it? But we will see. We will see. Big up to everybody that's locked in, as always. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that crap. And we'll see you guys very soon. Take care and up the chels. Potch out.